Hi everyone, Drogna here. Thought I might make this video for you today to talk to you about the correct sort of paint selection you're going to need for a MagFed gun, as well as good maintenance tips for the magazines for your MagFed guns. Now I'm going to start off by talking about the correct sort of paint that you want for your MagFed gun. Our MagFed guns, what they do is the magazines in them put our paint under spring tension. What this can cause is over time is that the paint will start to deform and could potentially crack. Therefore, what we need is we need paint that is fairly tough nice and spherical and is a good uh, good size as well. Um, you don't want paint that's too small and you don't want paint that's too large. Uh, I'm going to talk to you uh, first off about the size of paint. Um, obviously with our magazines here we need paint that's going to be able to drop into the, uh, the feet neck of the, uh, of the magazine without too much trouble. When we wind up our mags what we should find is that good quality ammunition drops in without too much trouble. Got some ammunition here and we're going to load up a few rounds here and I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. So when we put the ammunition in, as you can see there, that's not falling in under its own steam. This is some, some old paint that I've got. Uh, it's a little bit swollen and it's uh, not particularly good shape. So we shouldn't have to thumb the rounds in one at a time. They should simply drop in under their own steam. If you're finding that you're having to actually push the rounds in each time, the ammunition is not going to be particularly good. The reason being is it's going to get stuck in the feed neck on the way out of the gun and it's going to cause you to have jams. Um, I'm going to overlay a little bit of footage here to uh, demonstrate this to show you what exactly what it is that I'm talking about. Now bear in mind here I've got a full air tank and a full magazine. I've spotted this guy, he hasn't seen me, I've got him. Five shots, not one round came out of the gun. Damn you! After respawning, I check my mag. Damn you, damn you! This paintball is so thoroughly stuck, I'm going to have to use the spring winder to push it out. Now as you saw there in that footage, the ammunition was getting stuck in the feed neck, it wasn't coming out because it was too large. Uh, not only that, but also that magazine there had been used quite thoroughly, that uh, footage was caught on the second day of one of my events, it had uh, about sort of five, six, maybe seven loads put through it already, so it had been very thoroughly used. So when you're loading up magazines, you should find that the ammunition should be able to drop in without too many problems. Obviously we don't want to go to the other extreme here, we don't want ammunition that's too small. Ammunition that's too small is just as likely to cause you problems as ammunition that's too large. What I'm talking about here is when the ammunition actually gets inside of your marker. You want your ammunition inside your marker to fill the breach completely here. You want to make sure that, that paintball is going to be uh, taking up as much space inside of the breach as possible so that it matches the size of the bolt and the barrel. The reason for this is uh, in order for you to prevent getting something called a uh, ball chop. What can happen is because the magazine puts your paint under spring tension, the springs push the, the uh, ammunition up, ammunition that's inside of the breech will obviously have the next paintball resting underneath it. As the spring pushes it up inside of the breech, if the ammunition is too small, the next paintball can make its way into the breech slightly. Obviously, as the bolt goes home, it can then clip the next paintball in the stack, which will of course cause it to crack or break. This is obviously going to cause you all sorts of problems when the next time you go to fire because you're going to end up obliterating the paintball that's already broken inside of the breech. Once you've done that, you're going to keep breaking paint until you drop the magazine out, clear that break out of there, swab your barrel and then try again. So you don't want ammunition that's too small, you want ammunition that's a good size. Typically speaking, I tend to find that ammunition that's between sort of uh, 0.678 and between 0.68 684 around about there. That's the sort of area you want to be in. Um, some good quality ammunition that I like to use is a uh, LASIK Meteor. Uh, obviously bear in mind that ammunition type, how good it is, will vary from uh, batch to batch. Not only that, things like temperature and humidity will also play in. On hot, humid days your ammunition is going to swell up. On cold, dry days your ammunition is going to contract slightly. So always make sure that you bore size your paint. Make sure that you check how easily it falls inside the magazines here. Uh, another good quality paint that people uh, that's always touted as a, a magfed grade paint is Vulcan Graffiti. That one is uh, also uh, supposed to be quite good. 
Now the next thing we're going to look at is how to look after and maintain your magazines. Uh, most magazines are held together as two halves of a shell with some simple screws, so all we're going to need here is just normal Phillips head screwdriver. So first things first, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to remove these two screws here. If you've got an Onacor TGR2 with scarab mags, what you're going to want to do is uh, first off remove the plastic covers that cover the screws here. Once you remove them, I wouldn't recommend putting them back on. They're a bit of a pain taking on and off constantly when you want to do maintenance on your mag. So let's go ahead and let's remove these screws. There we go. Once we remove those, the uh, two halves of the shell of the magazine will come apart. What I'm going to do now is, uh, this is applicable to Milsig mags, so I'm going to turn this over the other side. You can see I've got the winding mechanism here. You want that face down. So put that face down and then slowly separate the two halves of the magazine. Be careful as you do it, as you can see obviously you've got the spring running through the track there. Um, obviously the reason I put it face down there was so that the winding mechanism didn't come out with it. Um, we're going to take it out in a moment but obviously you don't want it flying out as you do it. But then what, what you want to do is remove the feed neck there, put that to one side. And then what you want to do is, you've got the uh, winding mechanism here held in place by these two pins. You want to lift that assembly there out. Just a bit of a wheel and it comes out. There we go. Be careful to make sure that you don't lose the two locating pins there that hold it in place. Put those to one side. Don't lose them. There we go. Now the most important part of the magazine here that we're going to want to clean is the track that the paintballs run in. If you get broken paint inside of your inside of your magazines, it won't inside of the gun, what will happen is that broken paint will drip down into this track here. Not only that, when the paint ball is feeding through the track here, uh, if there's any dirt in there whatsoever, the paint is going to pick up that dirt, it's going to carry it into the breech and then it's going to carry it into the barrel. So not only is good maintenance and proper paint selection very important in terms of uh, uh, consistency in preventing breaks. It's also very important with regards to making sure that your, your gun remains as accurate as possible. So first things first, let's clean this track here. Uh, all you're going to want for this is just a bit of, bit of cloth, bit of tissue, something like that. You want to remove any loose or broken paint, any paint shell that's in there. Just run your finger through the track and clean anything up there. There we go. Obviously you want this to be as smooth as possible. There we go. The other thing, of course, that we want to do is, uh, like I say, we want it to be as smooth as possible. One of the things that I always like to use is this stuff here. This is a silicon spray lubricant. Uh, this is useful uh, for pretty much all maintenance needs on, on uh, any form of marker because what this does is it leaves a really nice, clean, smooth finish. Uh, you don't want to use too much of it. Obviously, you don't want any residue left behind. But what I find is a quick squirt in both sides of the track. A little bit too much there on that first one, but never mind. Spray that in there and then work that into the track. There we go, both sides. And like I say, make sure there's no residue left behind because the paint will pick that up and you don't want that. There we go. So if you feel that afterwards, that is a really nice smooth finish. That will help to keep your paint feeding properly and consistently. It prevents it from getting stuck. So once you've cleaned two halves of the shells there, we're going to put those to one side. Next thing we're going to look at is the feed neck. Now obviously the feed neck will be different depending on what type of magazine you use. The Milsig mags here, um, they have this feed neck block which comes away. Uh, one of the important things about this feed neck here is making sure that the detent, this piece here, doesn't get stuck. That should return nicely and smoothly. As you can see, that one's working just fine. Um, with uh, Scarab mags and Tiberius mags, uh, you'll have some form of detent which will either be attached to the mag or in a similar block like this. You need to make sure that detent is moving smoothly and freely. If it gets stuck at any point, what will happen is one of two things. Either if it's stuck, the paint will not feed into the gun once you put the magazine in because the detent won't move out of the way. The other thing that might happen is if the detent gets stuck in the downward position, uh, because there's dirt or grit in that track there, what will happen is um, your magazine will not retain its paint when you put it in the mag, uh, inside your mag pouches or when you're pulling mags out. What will happen is, because the detent's stuck down as you pull the magazine out, the uh, ammunition will uh, just simply fall out of the feed neck. So we're going to go over and uh, look at for a proper cleaning of that, of that detent there. Um, 
And with the Milsig mag block here, what we want to do is if you grip it, finger and thumb at the top, and then the top, uh, the lower piece, give it a bit of a wiggle, and the two pieces you can see there come apart like that. Make sure you keep it clamped between finger and thumb here because this piece here actually now falls into two halves, and obviously you've got the detent. You can see that pops out. It sits in there like that. Don't lose that, you need that. So again, what we're going to do here with these two pieces is we're going to use a bit of silicon lubricant to uh, clean these two pieces off. Again, not too much. That'll be enough for both. Work that into there, and then again, same on the other side there. What, you want to, uh, what you're going to want to do next is um, you're going to want to uh, make sure that these grooves in here make sure that that little track that the detent sits in, make sure that's clean. You can see I've got a cocktail stick here. Just run that through there. What you can do is, of course, you can put bits like this into your sink, uh, run some water over it, make sure it is perfectly clean. Um, one of the things that I find is that the detents in these attract uh, sand and mud very, very quickly, and as, as a result of that, the detent can get stuck very, very easily. So uh, make sure that those are nice and clean. Uh, this is the part here that I was talking about that you can run the uh, the Dremel down the inside of in order to open it up a little bit to ensure that even if you are using large paint it, uh, that it doesn't get stuck. I found since I've started using the silicon lubricant there and making sure that the magazines are very very clean and that they're working efficiently, I found that the paint doesn't get stuck and I don't get any hang ups. So once you've done that piece, put that to one side. The Milsig detents actually break into two pieces, you've also got the spring and the bar there. The, uh, this half of the bar though actually comes off, you're going to want to make sure that's nice and clean. Again, cocktail stick there works quite well to clean that out, make sure that there's nothing caught inside of there. So reassemble that, break it in half again. There's a small little notch here that the spring sits in inside of the feed neck, so what you want to do is you want to put your detent back in, seat the spring into the notch, with a little bit of pressure it stays in place, take the other half of the feed neck and put it together. Once you've put it together like that, the detent should pull and return nicely without getting stuck. That's the, that's the sort of situation you want. You want it to be returning nice and smoothly. Once you've done that, reassemble it, put the lower half on. You'll see there's a notch cut into that. That notch matches up with the notch in the feed neck there. So put that back together should be a nice tight press fit. Once you've done that, that's all good. Now the other thing you have to make sure is clean is the, uh, the actual spring and the follower. You want to make sure the top of the follower there is nice and clean. Be careful when you're cleaning the spring here. Obviously it's a bit of a pain cleaning it. Uh, I would advise against using water to clean it because it can be very, very irritating to dry and bear in mind it is a steel spring, it can rust. But if you've got something like a microfiber cloth or just some tissue, run it over the spring, make sure it's nice and clean. Um, inspect your winding mechanism as well. You want that to be nice and dry, make sure that's clean and free of paint. In the Milsig winding mechanism, there's this small uh, noodle piece here, which runs out, you can see there. Make sure that that's nice and clean. You'll see that there's two notches cut in the top of that, and you've got two holes in the winding mechanism. Obviously, those line up. Make sure that the long part of the winding mechanism, you can see here, you've got this long piece here, and you've got the short piece on the other side. The long piece goes towards the spring hammer handle there. That feeds into there. This can be a little bit fiddly sometimes. And like I say, you want to make sure that that noodle piece lines up with the holes in the top there. So, quickly run a bit of cloth over that, make sure that's nice and clean. There we go. Alright, that's the magazine uh, nice and clean, let's uh, start putting it back together. Just double check this again, I've just noticed there's a small bit of silicon lubricant left in there. Clean that out. Now these two halves of the magazine shell are handed. As you can see, there's uh, this uh, raised plate piece here. This is the piece that we want to put the winding mechanism back into. So we're going to put that to one side for the moment. We're going to put that around there. First things first, let's put the mounting pins for the winding mechanism in. Slot those in like so. 
Then we take the winding mechanism. You've got the winder there. That's the uh, part that you actually turn to actually wind it up. That goes face down through the hole. And what you want to make sure is as you put this down, pull the spring away so that it lands this side of this plate. So line up the uh, pins with the winding mechanism. Bear in mind you need that small plastic noodle piece to be aligned, otherwise it won't drop into place. Again, this takes a little bit of a knack. Oh, I may have been wrong about that noodle piece. Looks like it may well go around the other way. Ah, no, I just had it in the wrong place. I stand corrected. There we go. Make sure that the cable wire goes to the other side of that plate there and the spring drops in place. Then run your spring into the track. Now the natural inclination for this spring is that it's going to want to pop out and it can be a little bit frustrating. Reassembling both halves of the magazine shell here can, it takes a little bit of knack, takes a little bit of getting used to. What you want to do is you want to hold it down with one hand. Don't put the feed neck on just yet. What we want to do is we want to get it clamped in place first. So once you've got it positioned, make sure that, that spring stays down the other side of that plate there. Make sure it doesn't pop up or rise up. If it does, you won't be able to put it back together. Take the magazine shell, place it over the top, drop it in place as you take your hand out. Ah, now, as you saw there, it's jumped out of place that plate there, which means I'm not going to put it back on. So we put that back down again. Like I said, this takes a bit of knack. There we go. What you may find is, as you're clamping it together, it may clamp together nicely, all apart from the top here. If you're finding the top part's not going together, push down on the spring release there to push out of the way. So once we've got it into that state there, keep it clamped together. You then take your feed neck, pop it over the top, make sure your detent is facing towards the front. What we want to do now is we want to crack open the top half of the shells here, not too far mind, just a little bit so you can pop the feed neck back on. In it goes, drop it down again, there we go. That's all together now, back in one piece. Something to bear in mind is when you're putting the screws back in, these screws are, as you can see, self-tapping screws, they're not uh, machine screws. Um, so when you're popping them back in, make sure you get them aligned correctly. Also, bear in mind, you're not screwing into a metal insert, you're screwing into plastic, so don't over-tighten them. If you do over-tighten them, what you will find is, over time, the uh, mounting points inside of the magazine where the screws actually contact will start to crack and break apart. There we go, that's the magazine back together. Obviously, once you've put it back together, wind it up. Make sure it's working properly, hit the release catch and it should pop straight back up. Again, check your detent, make sure that's flowing nice and smoothly. And there we go, that's working perfectly. So, there you have it. That's how you look after your magazines. If you follow those sort of uh, maintenance tips, uh, you should find you get fewer, uh, fewer jams, fewer breaks, and you have a more enjoyable day as a result of that. Hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned a little bit about uh, looking after your magazines and a good paint selection, and I'll see you guys next time.